All right, so there's been a lot of conversation around the topic of online versus offline tournaments and PC versus console tournaments. Uh, there was a video done by Ernesto Lopez uh, that I saw a little bit ago, and then also I was reached out to by Big Scythe to talk about this topic as well. Uh, so I figure we should go ahead and talk about this topic. What's going on guys, Philosopher here, and welcome back to FGC Philosophy. Uh, this is where we talk about a bunch of different topics related to the FGC. Hopefully they help us level up inside and outside the virtual arena, and sometimes they're just for entertainment. Uh, but yeah, let's just dig into this topic, shall we? First off, let's talk about offline versus online. And I want to share a tweet from Punk. Uh, he's a very well-known Street Fighter V player, but also has been playing Strive and doing fairly well. Uh, I haven't checked on him in the last month or so with tournament performance, but he's been doing pretty good. So uh, I want to share this tweet with you guys real quick. I can't be anyone in anything today. Just, just feels like my motivation dies every tournament I go to since online. Whoa, hold on, this guy's English is a little rough. All right, it just feels like my motivation dies every tournament I go to since online been a thing. I can't get my motivation back for playing offline. I just don't really seem in it when I'm playing it. No, uh, it's, it's not just, it, <laughs> what, what? It's just not fun anymore is what I think he's trying to say. I think that's what he's trying to say is it's just not fun anymore. So I feel like that conversation sort of sparked off a lot of debate as well. Like a lot of conversations sparked around that. I tried to avoid social media, especially Facebook, but on Twitter, I, I kind of look surface level. So a lot of times it's mainly what I'm hearing from people around me and how they're talking about the topic. I watch a lot of button check. So that also keeps me pretty informed into the climate of the FGC, at least from his perspective, right? But then Punk goes on to say, LOL, I got one more tournament, then I'm done traveling for a long time. I lose and I know why I'm losing, but have zero motivation to fix it. I'll just keep doing the same thing over and over until I lose because it's no fun in playing anymore. I feel like there's a lot to break down in that uh, because people could be reading into it one way or another. Like this just could be Punk's personal journey where maybe he's moving on to other things, he's done the fighting game thing and maybe not he's bored of it. Uh, it could be just offline tournaments specifically just aren't as enjoyable because it's way more inconvenient. Uh, like, you, you really have to weigh the, the pros and the cons, right? You have to travel, you have to pack your stuff, it's more stressful because of COVID and all the restrictions and people that are acting crazy right now versus playing online where Guilty Gear Strive specifically, it has really good net code. Uh, it has some minor inconveniences here and there, but compared to traveling during a pandemic, uh, and then also you have to add in the fact that Punk just might be burnt out playing fighting games. He might not like uh, those specific fighting games anymore, maybe because he's playing Strive and uh, that has somewhat affected him, or maybe there's so many fighting games coming out that he's not so much interested in competing. Uh, or it could be that the revenue that he's generating just from making content is way more desirable right now. You know, people mature, people change. Uh, I, I know that my perception of competing and fighting games has changed and evolved over the years, uh, from having no interest in it to uh, being very, very interested in it to, that, to the point to where it's the only thing I think about. Uh, to, to where I'm finding a balance, to where I I want to still compete and improve, but I just enjoy the process of playing the game, playing it with friends, playing long sets. I currently like long sets way more than I like playing in tournament. Uh, I enjoy the adrenaline rush of playing in tournament, but it's just not as desirable as just improving at the game. For, for Punk, and this is a lot of speculation, right? But I just want to take the different things that I've experienced and I've seen other people experience and talk about that. Not so much assume that this is what Punk is going through, but using it as a sounding board to talk about different perspectives that people could be having. Uh, because one of the things that really bothers me is I think a lot of people put too much stock in what a pro says about something. Uh, it's the same thing with celebrities. I, I don't fully understand it. I've never had the mentality of just following what someone else says because they're more popular than you are, or more successful than you are. Uh, unless it's specifically advice towards how to get better at what it is that I want. I don't really care about their opinion too much. That's just how my brain has always worked. Uh, and it still works that way. <laughs> and it, it's, it's doing fine for me. So I mean, to each their own. But in saying that, 
I think it's important to kind of break down those possibilities. So we've already talked about a few. Also, I'm sorry, my nose is a little bit stuffed right now. So I'm sorry if I sound a little nasally and trying to edit out all the, the sniffles and such, but let's move on, shall we? But yeah, this could be a level of maturity for Punk. Before, Punk was a type of personality that seemed to relish in beating other people and making them look stupid in the process. Not just in the game, but as a person, as a human being, as attacking them. I haven't seen that personality type change, so I'm hesitant to say that it's necessarily he's maturing in uh, how he feels about playing the game and his relationship with the game. But it's possible. It could be, hey, I just enjoy fighting games so much, I just want to play them and share the experience with people on stream. It could be I've enjoyed streaming or making content more, or the motivation of, of the income that I'm making that's way more steady. Because when you compete, you only make money when you win or you place, right? You, you get to the top, whatever it is, the top cut to get paid. That's normally the only time you get paid. If you're sponsored, you're usually the, they're paying your travel expenses and registration fees, but they're not always paying a salary to you. I don't know about Panda Global and Punk and Justin Wong, but in what I've seen, usually that's not always the case, but he's a higher pro. He's one of the best Street Fighter players in the world, let alone America, top two in America. Uh, so it, it's very likely that he's getting a salary from that, but Panda Global also does a lot of content and he's sponsoring them. So they could be paying them specifically for content and ad revenue, something along those lines. And that may also be more consistent than just going and competing. So those could all add to the reason why he specifically has no desire to really compete anymore. He's been the best, he's beaten the best, he's uh, been around for a long time and now he's, you know, I don't think that he's really that rich from his tournament winnings. Uh, maybe he is, I don't know for sure or how he spends his money or, or invests it. But uh, at the same time, that money will go away eventually if you're spending it on stuff. So if you're not investing it or bringing in new revenue, uh, i.e. content and, and sponsorships, you know, that's a scary place to be in. Even if you are the top player in the world, someone else can come and beat you and knock you off your pedestal, and now you're not making as much money as you used to. So, as he's getting older, his desire for steady income may be more important than just being the best in Street Fighter. That's speculation, but uh, that's how people evolve over time, is they have different experiences, they have different priorities. Uh, so, I, I don't know for me personally if his point of view really adds to the discussion of you know, offline versus online being better. But I do think there is something to see in there where it's like, okay, for him, is it worth the effort, right? Is it worth traveling? Is it worth putting yourself in danger with COVID and pandemic and crazy people right now? And uh, finally, you have games like Strive that have good net code. Uh, I don't know about Undernight or uh, what's the other game? Melty Blood. I don't know much about Melty Blood's net code. I've heard mixed things about it, but uh, I enjoy Strive. I've done a couple of online tournaments. Uh, there's nothing that really can replace an offline tournament to me, but that's if it's somewhere you're comfortable, right? I go to my locals, I feel comfortable. I know most of the people there. I know the owner of the venue. I'm comfortable being there because I know the people there got my back. And uh, if there's a crazy person, then we'll do our best to respectfully handle that. Uh, but when I go to, you know, Frosty Faustings, for example, I'm excited to go there. I got I got the hoodie on from, uh, what was it? 2020 <laughs> the last one that i went to and, and got to commentate also thank you elven shadow i appreciate you letting me commentate marvel uh that is a highlight for me to to stream for team spooky so uh thank you for that <laughs> i appreciate that and hopefully uh if i if i get the acceptance of going commentating again then i'll be at frosty's but if i uh if i don't get that then i probably won't be there for those who've been asking me i didn't really give you a solid answer but yes there is that stress and while i personally have always experienced great things from Fossey Faustings other than the fire alarm stuff. If you know, you know, if you don't, you don't. Uh, but I've always had a great time at Frosty Faustings. And at the same time now that so much political and social uh, conflict has been bubbling up to the top, it's, I've become a lot less comfortable with being around people that I don't know as well as I'd like to, uh, or, or just don't know how they are. I'm a pretty non-judgmental person, but uh, I can't always control how other people perceive me and my opinions, and I just don't really want to put myself in that situation right now. Plus, I have a son, so I don't want to bring back COVID. We're, we're both vaccinated, but my son uh, is like younger than five, so he can't get vaccinated yet. Uh, so there's that added risk of endangering those around me because I might bring it back with me, right? If I don't uh, 
handle it properly and you know there's always new science being developed uh i'm not trying to be overly paranoid but i'm also trying to be responsible and it's hard to be responsible when you don't know the steps the parenting steps or, or the spousal steps to handling a pandemic properly but still living your life right i think we should still try to the best of our ability live our lives uh, we have that privilege right now so we better take advantage of it but we also still need to be responsible but that's uh you know it's almost an aside but the pandemic is a huge part of why online tournaments are as popular as they are uh, and i think that the pandemic also exposed an issue with our standards of fighting games right and there's two things here and i'll, I'll segue into the other topic which is pc and console uh, but a lot of people have been playing online and a lot of people have been playing on console mainly i would suggest because a lot of streamers it's easier to stream on PC. You know, you can get a capture card and all that kind of stuff, but it's just extra steps. If you just boot up your software, boot up, you know, your streaming software, boot up your game and have your camera hooked up, it's good to go. But you have to double check your capture card and you have to make sure the feed is good and you have to have a third monitor or or lose a second monitor to have that on there. So it's it's more of a hassle. It's doable. It's not that bad, but compared to just playing on PC where it actually performs better anyway, if you have a good enough PC, why go through the extra steps? I've been playing on PC since halfway through Street Fighter V's life cycle, and I haven't really played on console except for tournament. Like, it's a tournament setup at this point. I play my single player games and other multiplayer games on on ps4 and i rarely touch it nowadays i play all my fighting games on pc uh, i work on the nights that i have locals so it's very much not a point for me to bring my stream setups anymore i'll bring an extra monitor when i show up because i have several monitors uh but yeah when it comes to consoles i personally think pc is just better but we're talking about console tournaments versus pc tournaments uh, which would be mainly in person, right? That's that's kind of a different conversation. And I'll, I'll circle back to that in a little bit. But to put a cap on the PC, the online versus offline, I, I think we have to look at where we are right now as a nation and maybe as a world. Uh, it's more dangerous and more risky to do in-person tournaments. And that's just the nature of how things are going right now. That's, that's where we are. And we have to acknowledge that. Uh, we haven't completely conquered the pandemic you know the reasons you can pick your own i'm not really going to get into the politics of it right now uh but that said that's where we are and it's just safer and smarter to play on online tournaments if your game can support that uh especially if you're a higher level player where there's still big prize pools so it's you don't have to travel anywhere you don't have to do anything you don't have to uh, if you're going overseas make sure you have your vaccinations and your passports it's just way more convenient and if you can't acknowledge that then that's on you but if it's not your thing that's fine too if you want offline tournaments then do that just i recommend making sure you're safe uh that you're being responsible that you're not you know invading anyone else's privacy or space or anything like that but that's how i feel about it right now i don't really have much of a desire to travel myself or tournaments i do have a desire to travel because me and my wife just love to travel and going to different tournaments has been that outlet for us you know we'll go to locals but we'll also uh we'll go do our own thing right we'll meet up with our friends we'll have fun i'll play sets i'll stay up playing games but i make sure we go out and do something and see some sites that have nothing to do with fgc so yeah i personally think offline tournaments are great when done properly it's just harder to do that right now and online tournaments are getting more and more convenient so why not keep doing that that's my thoughts. But to move on to console and PC, uh, I already gave away how I feel about it. I, I, I would say uh, consoles are more convenient for locals, local tournaments, but PC has been proven to perform better. Street Fighter V, I know it had less input delay. I felt like the connections were, were fine on PC. The loading times are faster on PC. For example, you know, there's a lot of loading times on Street Fighter V. But when you're playing a cross-platform match with a PS4 player, on average, I don't know about the Pro, uh, I don't know if this differs from four to five either, but when we get back to the lobby and I'm able to press start, that's a whole like six seconds faster than a console player, a uh, PS4 player specifically. It'll be four seconds left on the clock by the time they're fully loaded and able to actually press start. So it just saves a lot of time for people who are competitive, uh, but also care about their competitive efficiency. They want to get in as many sets as possible. They want to reduce the amount of time that they're not playing as possible because that's wasted time. 
Uh, so every six seconds in a first to 10 or, or like, you know, when you're switching sets and you're in a lobby with multiple people, that's a lot of wasted time for no reason. Whereas Guilty Gear Strive, it's, it's pretty fast. Everything loads pretty fast other than connecting to the network, uh, which there's a mod called Totsugeki that reduces that, which doesn't seem to have any issue from the publishers as far as I'm aware. Uh, modding is pretty easy in Guilty Gear Strive right now, so that's really nice. But you also have to get into the conversation of offline tournaments when it comes to console and PC. Now, my console is set up pretty easily. And the first topic I want to talk about is... <laughs> I can't think of the word. I can't think of the word. What, is my what am I trying to say? The setup and the technical difficulties I'll, I'll put into one group here. Uh, because when it comes to PC games, you can have a lot of technical difficulties if you're not prepared for it. Uh, because when you're hooking up different controllers, normally different controllers, and then depending on how you do your audio as well, uh, there's a lot more setup involved per console. And it's sometimes very, very frustrating and time consuming to do that. I remember one time at a different venue where someone wanted to host a fighting game tournament, Dragon Ball Fighters tournament, uh, and they wanted to do it on PC. And I was like, look, you're going to have issues. Please don't do it on PC. Console is a tournament standard for a reason. You got you to gotta do it on, on console, PS4. If you have plenty of consoles, please do that. And they didn't take my advice. And when the tournament happened, hooking up controllers was a nightmare. And the best way to, to deal with that is put it in big picture mode. But also, if you don't have a good enough PC, people argue that the performance gets diminished because you're running big picture mode, which takes a lot of resources. I don't know if that's true. That's just what I've heard. I'm not the biggest tech guy when it comes to the numbers and specs. That just kind of goes off my, my head a little bit. But anyways, uh, yeah, so it's you have the chance or the risk of bigger and worse technical difficulties where a console is pretty simple science. You hook up your controller or you sync it up if it's a wireless controller and you play the game. And then if you're a wireless controller, you desync your controller, right? <laughs> Although console, that's an issue, I think, exclusive to console. I don't think PS PC has that issue uh, of like desyncing your controllers. I'm not positive on that because I almost never use wireless controllers on PC. Uh, I just never really thought to do that. But anyways, yeah, so it, needless to say, I think you have the higher risk of bigger technical difficulties. Uh, but then you also get into the risk of higher preparation. So I'll look at this from two point of views, right? I'm a tournament organizer, but I also compete. So I'm going to look at it as the TO's point of view. Uh, from the TO's point of view, that's more expensive because you either have to have less setups or pay way more money for multiple setups. You know, a console is like, what, 400 to $500, uh, and then a monitor is like $200. But if you get a PC and you want to run it with, you know, full settings and everything, that's that's a good chunk of change depending on if you want to buy it or build it yourself. Uh, you know, 500 to $1,500 for a good PC that can run most fighting games. And then you also have the monitor and stuff like that. Uh, more setup, you know, the sound, but it has better potential, has better production quality potential, in my opinion, because PC just always looks better. Fighting games, I don't think they go through that much trouble to make it look better, but it's just, you have more control when it comes to PC games, but it's also way more expensive. So you have to think about that. And then you also have to think about the entrance fee, because if it costs more to run a tournament, then that's gonna be taken out of the entrance fee, whether it be the venue fee or how much it costs to get into an individual tournament. And if people are willing to do that, because I think fighting game tournaments have been relatively cheap. I don't know how much it is to do like a Halo tournament or, or a Call of Duty tournament in person or, or like League of Legends. I don't know if they even like have any, you can't do a pay tournament for League of Legends unless it's a Riot tournament. So that's, that's kind of irrelevant. That's another topic. But uh, yeah, I would say if I had to do PC tournaments and, and I had to like make a profit or at least break even, I'm gonna increase the premium, uh, the entrance fee, so that I can at least break even or maybe make a little bit of a profit. That's just the way it works. You call, you spend more money for an event, you need to make that money back. So for people who get mad at higher premiums, you know, it's like there's money that is being spent to make these tournaments. When I hear people like complain about the entrance fee, the tournaments, I'm like, do you understand what it takes to run one? But that's, that's, that's a tangent. That's a rant that I don't want to go down, but uh, I just, I get mad when people don't respect uh, TOs and then they, they just assume and make up stories rather than actually getting the inside scoop as to why the price is so high or why or whatever. I hate when people just make assumptions without knowing anything. They just think they can like mind meld their way to understanding how someone else thinks. But anyways, yeah, I, I do think that 
in the future, PC tournaments are going to be potentially the way to go. But right now, because of the whole FGC is poverty thing, it's hard to believe that's going to happen unless we have some outside investors. And then if that happens, then we lose control of what the FGC looks like, uh, at least when the tournaments are being run. So uh, unless people from the FGC are going to step up and put money into it and, and learn how to manage their finances so that we can have better tournaments by us for us, we got to look externally for our sources of income. Uh, and that means that they're going to come with demands because they want what they want and they're going to get it from us if we want to make money and, and get money from them. So that's, that's just how business works right now in this current structure. And uh, if you're going to complain about it, you're just wasting your time. But there's another thing I want to talk about, which is the Steam Deck. Now, me and a friend did a podcast on a separate show, on a separate podcast, did an episode on a separate podcast and talked about PC. It was a different topic, but we got into the topic of the Steam, Steam Deck and the technology that comes with that. Now, I do think that Steam Deck makes it potentially way more affordable for tournament organizers to run their tournament at a seemingly even price to what they're used to because I think a, a Steam Deck is going to be about the price of a console. It's basically like a Switch where you can dock it and you can hook it up to stuff, but it's it's a PC. Uh, so it's going to have, I think it's Linux based, but one would assume it'd be a lot easier to hook up controllers to it. I believe the dock is going to have USB ports and stuff like that, so you can hook it up and then it's going to have HDMI outs, which means you can get a capture card and a splitter so that you can route one to the TV and one to the stream setup. Uh, so it it seems to alleviate that question of console versus PC, where it looks like PC is answering that question or, or Steam is answering that question for us, where it's like, nah, it's going to be PC, uh, and here's how. <laughs> and I think that's a interesting i won't say it's good per se but i think that's interesting i'm excited for it i don't have an xbox i don't see a reason to get consoles anymore nowadays to be honest with you because i can still play ps4 games on the ps uh, pc so uh, i just do that so for me i i think that it's pc in the future but right now we're still kind of console but maybe by the time we're done with this pandemic it might be more of a pc and i think the steam deck is going to answer that question. Now, I don't think, to to recap here, I don't think offline tournaments are gonna be replaced by online tournaments. Those are just two different atmospheres uh, and people want different kinds of atmosphere. Now, if you're an introvert or you hate to travel and you're very paranoid because of the pandemic, online tournaments are for you. But if you're very much an extrovert, you need to be around people, you're energ energized by social interactions, you just prefer offline more, then that's for you. Because I think a lot of people are trying to say, like they have this really bad habit of making one the better one instead of just putting them in different categories. Offline tournaments are offline tournaments and online tournaments are gonna be online tournaments. Unless social interaction is completely banned in America, there's never gonna not be a need for offline tournaments. Uh, whereas also if the pandemic continues to be an issue, offline tournaments or online tournaments are gonna to continue to have more and more value especially for those who thrive in those kinds of environments where some people don't like playing in front of a crowd, but they might be the best, one of the best players in the world potentially, but the anxiety of playing in person just cripples them. Uh, and they wanna play online and they want that scene to be supported. So I think there is a chance that when the pandemic is handled, offline tournaments might be, again, the king and online might not be prioritized, but I, don't think that'll be the case. I think it'll be more of a 50-50 sort of thing where it'll level out because tournament organizers are going to still see a value in online tournaments. Other tournaments do this. League of Legends, Rocket League, uh, uh, Valorant. Most games have good netcode and they have online tournaments because it's just simpler to do it and they can still have a great production and they can have it be qualifiers to end up somewhere in a local place, but they can host bigger and broader tournaments to the world um, or to the region and then have everyone collapse in a local, sort of like EVO, where it's like everyone would potentially, you know, compete online to get into EVO, and then the top whatever would actually be invited to EVO to compete. So it just allows for a bigger story because you have the off, the online story to, uh, merging into the online. That's personally one of my more favorites because uh, you can maintain the esportsification of having, uh, you know, online tournaments that lead to a big high-scale production offline tournament but you still have the grassroots 
you still have your your Richard Thiers, aka the Hado. You still have your your Sabins and Team Spookies doing lo uh, local tournaments and bigger majors. You still have that kind of stuff because grassroots is grassroots and esports is esports. And there's no reason those two have to clash. I like both of them. I love Street Fighter League, but I also love going to my locals. So I I want people to do what they like and stop shitting on things they don't like because I like offline tournaments and I like online tournaments and I don't want either of them to go away. Uh, if you don't like one of them, then just focus on the one you do like and stop shitting on the one that you don't because you don't have to. Uh, ignore the people who are the haters and stop being one of them yourself because you feel vindicated to respond to what someone else is saying stupid. It's a dumb cycle. Just break the cycle, do what you like, and then don't focus on what you don't like. And unless it's detrimental to your existence, stop trying to fight it, right? Does that makes sense. Am I making sense to you guys? Let me know in the comments down below what you think about all this, uh, because I have said enough on this topic. I appreciate it. Again, Big Scythe for reaching out to me and asking this question. I think the last thing that he asked that I want to address is, uh, with the question coming up all the time, what could the community do to get past the debate of offline versus online? Uh, and to recap, I already said it, focus on what you like and stop focusing on what you don't like. And we don't have to have this debate because they're both cool, they're both great things, and they both have a need in the FGC, especially online tournaments right now during this pandemic. So there shouldn't be a debate. If you're one of those people that is like that for whatever reason, I don't understand you, but stop it. Stop it, do what you like, and stop, stop hating on the things you don't like, okay? That said, thank you guys so much. I'm gonna get out of here and I'll see you all in the next one.